Now, it wasn't just in the oceans that people were looking at magnetism. Magnetism was a popular thing to look at in the 1950s, and people were also doing it on land. And in particular, they were looking at magnetism in rocks. Now, volcanic rocks in particular form, like this one here, this is a volcanic rock. Volcanic rocks form from molten lava, which erupts at the Earth's surface, and then cools. And the rock contains little tiny grains of iron oxide. And when they cool, they become magnetized. And they become magnetized in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. And then the rock itself can become a little magnet. Let me show you that this rock here is a little magnet. Here's a, a, a compass needle pointing north at the moment. I can actually make it move by pushing this magnet around. So rocks can become magnetized. Now, volcanic rocks that form today become magnetized in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field today. That's what you would expect. But some magnetic rocks, or some rocks, were magnetized apparently backwards. Let me explain what that means. Here is a bar magnet, and the Earth's magnetic field looks like that from a bar magnet. Now, if I produce this, this is a, a magic wand which has another magnet in here, and this magnet can move around here. If I bring this magnet close to this magnet here, move it around, you'll see that the yellow end of my wand is pointing to the red end of this magnet. Now, if I reverse the magnetic field in this sample here, this, so supposing this was my rock with a magnet inside it, when I say it's reversed and magnetized backwards, what I mean is it's like that. Now, instead of the yellow end of my magnet pointing to that, the red end will. So that's what I mean by being magnetized backwards. It looked as though the magnet in the rock was pointing in the different direction from the Earth's magnetic field. It was pointing the other way. Now, we don't measure the direction of the magnetization in rocks by this kind of magic wand. We use a much more sensitive instrument which is like this thing here. And if I show you this, how this works, I'm going to bring up this rock, which is like a tiny little magnet, towards the end of this probe. And we should see that needle on the screen move. There it is, it moves to the right. And if I turn this up the other way, it'll move the other way. So that this instrument can tell what direction the magnetization is in my rock, what way up the magnetization is. Now, what we have here is six rocks, which are all from a volcano in Britain. These are from a volcano in Scotland, off the west coast of Scotland, the island of Skye. And they're from, that volcano was active about 50 million years ago. It's not doing anything now. These are old lavas. Now, the extraordinary thing about these lavas here is when we measure the direction of the magnetic field in them, they are... Backwards, the magnetic field is in the opposite sense from the magnetic field of the Earth. And these are much less magnetic than this rock over here. They're, they're very weakly magnetic, but this can still pick it up. Let me show you. You'll have to watch the screen very carefully now because the movement will only be a, a small amount. So if I bring this one close to the probe here, so the move just moves very slightly. And if I turn it over, it moves very slightly the other way. It's a small effect, but these instruments are very, very sensitive. And we can actually measure the direction of magnetization in these rocks. So what are we to make of all this? Some rocks are magnetized in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field, and some are magnetized backwards. Well, the next, thing, next advance in this whole business was to actually be able to date these rocks, to find out how old they were. And in the late 1950s, uh, uh, some instruments were developed which could actually work out how old those rocks are by looking at the natural radioactivity in them. These rocks, as I say, are 50 million years old and their magnetization is backwards. If we take other rocks from some other part of the world, Japan maybe, or America, or India, doesn't matter, if they are the same age as these rocks, you find that they are also magnetized backwards. And if we find rocks which are magnetized in the normal sense of the Earth's magnetic field, all other rocks in the world of the same age are also magnetized in that same direction. So it really does look as though the magnetic field of the Earth itself flipped, that the North Pole became the South Pole magnetically, and that the South Magnetic Pole became the North Pole. And by dating these rocks, you could find out when that happened. And by about 1966, 
people had made a calendar of what had happened. And this is the calendar. What we have here is time. This is today, naught, one million years, two, three, four million years. And the black means that the magnetic field is in the same direction as it is today. But here, which is about 700,000 years ago, the magnetic field flipped. The Earth's magnetic field turned round. And here, just before one million years ago, it had flipped back again. And here it was reversed, and here it was normal, normal, I mean, reversed, normal, reversed, normal, and so on. It had changed with time. And what this thing tells us is when it happened. This is a calendar of when the magnetic field reversed.